Good morning. This lecture is being presented at the Nigerian Baptist Theological Seminary in Obomasho and is a postgraduate seminar on Islamic history, culture, and philosophy. World religions, world religion seminar, WRE 712. And by a way of introduction, my name is Akintayo Olayinka. My middle name is Sunday. Akintayo Sunday, Olajide Olayinka. I got my PhD in Peace Studies with master's degrees in Islamic and Middle Eastern Studies, and another one in Philosophy of Religion, and also Master's of Theology with attention on Islam and New Testament literature. So everyone is welcome. In this seminar, there will be a section on assessments, and today I will also mention sometimes plagiarism, absences from classes, course description, the skills required to be able to do well in the seminar, a kind of guide for sources selection or references selection, then seminar presentation, references, and if we got the time, we'll also talk on different kinds of methods that could be used to keep your references intact electronically. So the seminar requires previous knowledge in world religions and introduction of religions, and study about culture, general philosophy, regardless whether you had philosophy of education, philosophy of science, philosophy of religion, whichever kind, but we need some elements of philosophy. Then, since this particular seminar is on Islam, we expect the person to have had a background in Islamic studies, or historical background of Islam. The seminar we take three kinds of assessments. It is essential that the participants can access various secondary and primary sources to enrich their works. So each participant is expected to present two papers and then there will be one article review or book review. So when I talk of primary sources, I expect the person to be able to use Quran and Hadith, English, since we are English speaking people or we, the course is basically an English taught program. Yet the person can also demonstrate the understanding of the use of some Arabic words, since some Arabic words will be found in some of the texts that you will be reading. But whenever you use an Arabic word, there's a need to put transliteration in front and also the English meaning so that it will be readable for an English reader. Basically, it's an English taught seminar. Uh, plagiarism is unacceptable. So I like to say that it's better to read about it rather than to plagiarize. Um, absences from classes are unacceptable unless the students 
just had new arrival of a baby. Probably you just had a baby in your, in your family. Otherwise, it is unacceptable to be absent from classes. Another reason why one could be absent from classes would be something like illness or accident, heaven forbid. And such should be verifiable with a sick note from the hospital where the person has been treated. So going through introduction to the seminar, this is an Islamic history, culture and philosophy seminar and designed for postgraduate study. It's an extensive study in the sense that each of the points raised here, history, is so elaborate, culture is so wide, and philosophy is so deep. And all the three are put together in one seminar. So this will involve extensive reading, extensive reading of relevant sources. It will involve critical thinking and presentation in classes. Presentation in classes is very, very important. Very, very important. I'm trying to admit somebody in. So critical ability is very important and ability to write also is very important. Our ability to present paper logically is also very relevant and is important in this study. Course description. This is an intensive postgraduate seminar on the origin and growth of Islam, starting with pre-Islamic religions, geopolitical situation, history, and culture of the Arabians up to the emergence of Islam and Islamic philosophical thoughts. So primary and secondary sources are required and utilized and should be utilized to illustrate the growth of Muslim beliefs and their worldviews. But towards the end of the seminar, we want to have theological reflections and we want to find out if or which Islamic culture or cultural beliefs is, uh, is available and supports Christian authentic worship. So all these things should be put in mind as we study. Some people are joining us. Okay. So we'll put all these things in mind as we continue to study. So basically, we do our seminar studying relevant sources that are available. Uh, we try and pay attention to primary sources, the Quran, the Adith, and books published within the culture of the people who are studying books and um, relevant sources within the Middle East will be studied very well. But we also pay attention to other primary sources like as we interpret Islam and find out how it began. We also try and interview people who practice Islam in other cultures to find out any correlation for us to be able to bring out the theological reflection in our study. Some skills are required in, in this seminar, which is a general kind of skills. And I want to encourage us to develop more skills as we continue to study together. Some of the relevant skills in postgraduate work include 
ability to use insertion of table of contents. This has not got this has got nothing to do with our own seminar. It's general, general for paper writing, inserting table of contents into your work, how to put pages or page number into your work, and use of PowerPoints, and then um, the knowledge of track changes when you submit a paper and is cross examined or is after reading through, I'll put some tracks there and she'll be able to accept or reject some of the tracks that I put there. And it's the thing that we should be conversant with. Then also, we should be able to demonstrate our awareness and mastery of Microsoft Word facilities for paper writing. You, should be, you can be able to proof read your work, partial proofreading of your work using the facilities already available in Microsoft Word. And uh, for keeping your references intact so that they won't get missing before the end of your study, I would like to introduce my EndNote Web, which we are going to uh, study at some point. If you don't have one yet, I want to encourage you to get my EndNote Web. It will help you to keep all your bibliography and references intact electronically, which you can return to any time in the future. You don't have to keep writing, writing the same references all over again. They could be kept for you in, in the software in that web. But if you don't like my EndNote web, another one is Zotero. Zotero does the same thing or similar thing. You can go for that. I currently use my EndNote web, but at some point in the past, I also used Zotero. I have an account for Zotero, but most of my um, references are in my EndNote web. So I would like to introduce that, and I encourage those who listen to this lecture in the future to look for an electronic way of keeping their references safe. It will be helpful and to be of adv advantage to every scholar and uh, writer and publisher. So all these things are very important, not just for this seminar, but for every academic person. So I talked about uh, sources for our study. Definitely you will have to lay your hands on Al Quran and Adit in Arabic and English languages, which are primary sources for this study. Also, Islamic and philosophy works that are published in the local languages where such cultures are practiced. What I mean is if you're talking about the hijab now in among a Jibo community in Nigeria, so it would be nice if you are able to read the works published by one of the scholars living in Ejibu, in that community, or you might want to interview them. What do they think of the hijab and how do they use, how do their women use hijab? What do they think about it? So that is also a primary source on hijab, but in relation to Ejibu community. So as we study, uh, the relevant sources from the Quran and Hadith and uh, Islamic and philosophical works published in the Middle East, you might want to compare it with what is operational in your own community. That is also a primary source. So that one leads us to interviews and a short survey. I call it a short survey in the sense that the old seminar is about four months, so you cannot do a survey that you collect after six months and return and collect another one after one year. That would be too late. So your survey should be very, or questionnaire should be very short and uh, should be administered quickly within a week or two or three, so that we'll be able to get the results as quickly as possible. You don't have to 
do any question here. I'm just giving examples of how you can get more primary sources for your work. So I'm looking forward to we studying the pre-Islamic history and Islamic history as we have it in the Arab big countries. But since Islam is practiced globally, we can also get relevant works in other parts of the world. You don't have to travel to Kuwait or travel to, to other parts of the Middle East for you to get your work done. You don't have to. Then secondary sources. And there is a guide for selecting relevant secondary sources. Uh, I would suggest, and I know it is the ideal thing, to make sure that you know the author of your secondary sources. Whose author, who is the author of the work you are citing? What do you know about them? How much do they know about the area you are exploring? It's very important, and I'm going to demonstrate that in this seminar. When I mention an author, I might want to tell you something about the author and the reason why I would like to cite his work or our work, their works, in my own program. I would like to check that. The second resource is very important. Know the author, know what they know, why they do what they do. It's very, very important. It's very important. Very important. So, know your author and what they do, and uh, the reason why they are studying and writing what they are writing. There are many things that can influence your author. So, find out what they write, who they are, where they live, and something that might influence what they have written. And the reason why you would like to cite their work in your in your paper. So that is that. For seminar presentation, I would say from now on, or even since last week, I've been presenting and I'll continue to present until first week in in March. We want to explore literature on pre-Islamic history, literature on pre-Islamic culture, and literature on pre-Islamic philosophy. So the references will be books, that is hard copy books. And uh, we are blessed nowadays because there are hard copy books that are already available online in form of PDF. So there are a lot of sources you can access online, which are hard copies, but they are presented in form of PDF. You see it as it is. You see the exact page number as it is, and then you read it as it is, and you cite it correctly. We also have journal articles, hard copies in our libraries, and also some are available online. If they're available online, you see the page number as it is, exactly the way it is. And there are some articles online that are supposed to be cited based on where you found it, not just by page number. So those are also available. But as I mentioned earlier on, you might want to interview some people around you who will be able to provide information about Islam or their understanding of pre-Islamic culture and uh, how relevant it is to your own paper. So you can do face-to-face -face interview and you can do online questionnaire. Then another good source is Google Scholar. You can go on your browser to search Google Scholar and after opening the browser, then put relevant words inside Google Scholar. I, I've been using hijab, so let me continue with hijab. You type hijab inside Google Scholar and let it bring, it, bring out relevant works. Whatever works comes up on the hijab you are citing within Google Scholar browser will 
give you scholarly works on the hijab that you can open it and read as many as possible another good source is jstor jstor.org www.jstor.org you can google that also in your browser and when you open it up then put the words you want to search inside it it will give you scholarly works in that area and you can read as many as possible and uh, let me say here that you can register for jstor.org with your name and you can search your institution your institution could be there if it's registered with jstor if your institution is not registered with jstor you can put your own name and your email there and register as a private person and you will be able to access their articles there are some of the articles that are free you just read them online and some are free for download and but some are not free so those are not free you just leave them if you don't want to go for them but go for those ones that are free if you want to go for those ones that are not free you can still go for them so but likewise in google scholar most of the works in google scholar are free so you can search them so these are good resources that you can use for this seminar so having said that i'd like to close the first part of this study i hope you have gained one thing or the other in the study i look forward to meeting you again god bless <laughs>